Were you or someone in your family injured in an accident involving a big truck? Chances are, while you were at the hospital, the insurance company was already on the scene, with lawyers and crash experts trying to build a case against you. You need a skilled legal team on your side, and you need it immediately. I'm Austin Jackson. My law firm has experience, resources, and experts of our own to get you the results you deserve. Injured? Call Austin Jackson, the Augusta guy. 706-724-7224. Hi, it's Cliff Baker. <laughs> Plus, Chief Meteorologist Riley Hale for your first alert. You're watching News 12, live at 5, continues. New photos today showing the absolute devastation left behind by severe weather in Bamberg County. Just hours ago, the National Weather Service confirming a tornado, an EF2, is responsible for the damage. The wind speeds uh, appear to be right around 125 miles an hour for maximum wind speeds. That makes it an EF2 tornado. We are also getting a better look at the aftermath. Now, despite the destruction that you see behind me, it's, it's almost a miracle. There are no reported injuries, no deaths from this tornado. Still, there is quite a lot of cleanup ahead for the Bamberg community who are staying strong and staying positive. Our Sydney Hood joins us now live at 5 in downtown Bamberg. And Sydney, the videos, the photos, all of this that we're seeing in the aftermath just really puts into perspective just how strong this tornado was as it carved through downtown. It really does, Meredith, and it's, again, amazing that there were no recorded injuries in all of this, but I want you to look behind me here. These are not just random buildings out here. These were once someone's business, and now all that's left are these bricks just scattered across the street. I was actually talking with a business owner earlier today who told me he was working to renovate some of these old historical buildings in downtown Bamberg, and now he feels like all that time and money he's invested, it's all gone essentially and to be honest with you he doesn't really know where he's going to go from here he just told me it's unfortunately one of those situations where he has to just play it day by day i'm 28 i've never been through this before you know i don't i don't know what happened this is my first you know property i've bought ever you can't google this you know, i don't know what to do so And as far as, you know, what's next for cleaning up all of this, there's been talk about potentially having to tear all of this down right here and then building from the ground up, which, you know, for these businesses right here who pour their heart and souls into this every single day, that's a hard pill for them to swallow for sure. But all new tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock, we're taking you all across the town to show you just how widespread this damage is. And such a shame that these buildings are historic and now bricks are on the ground like leaves. Thanks, Sydney. We go now to First Alert Chief Meteorologist Riley Hale, who's also on the ground in Bamberg. Riley, after covering the storm wall to wall for hours yesterday, what is it like to see the damage left behind firsthand? You saw it on radar. What's it like in person? Meredith, it's, uh, it's really eye-opening to see the how widespread the damage is and how intense the damage is. Where we're at here locally is at the Oak and Barrel Company. This is a company that makes oak barrels. And you can see an entire piece of this building is missing behind me. Now to the right here, where you see the part of the structure that was able to withstand the storm, that is a newly constructed piece that was an add-on to this building. So the part of the structure that actually is missing right now that you see behind me is across the street from us right now. That was old building standards. That's new building standards. So if you need proof on why they do have these building standards for uh, new construction coming on, that is exactly why. Now you're looking at video of damage across the area today. Um, where we're at here is just a couple blocks away from the downtown area where we've seen a lot of destruction there as well. Uh, as we mentioned, EF2, 125 mile per hour peak winds with this. They think the width of this, uh, the cell was about three or 400 yards wide. And you can see the scope of the damage uh, that we've been walking around today, talking with people. Uh, I was talking with an employee for this building at the Oak and Barrel Company, and he was 
uh, here yesterday, a little bit earlier today, and then other employees were watching the weather and they were expecting that, hey, it's looking bad. We just heard this, uh, that it's looking bad. Bamberg could be in next in line for these storms passing through. So they kind of dipped out a little bit earlier. There was one person that did stay in this building as the tornado hit. And uh, thankfully, his cell phone went off from the emergency alert system. He was able to get to a safe spot, and he was okay. And Meredith, you mentioned this, that uh, no injuries, no deaths with this tornado. And after seeing the damage firsthand, I, I, it's hard to understand how. Uh, but thankfully, people were prepared. They knew what to do. They knew to go to their safe spot, where to go. And that's the key. When you're prepared for these storms, you can live through them. You just have to know uh, and stay weather aware. Riley, I think a lot of the credit can go, you're so humble, though, to our first alert weather team. You know, we get a lot of calls and people are upset about programming being interrupted. But this is why, what you're seeing right now, this is why you and your weather team are on the air talking about these storms, telling people to get in their safe spaces. Exactly right, Meredith. This is, this is a prime example of why we put out first alerts, why we issued that first alert weather day. We were talking about the severe weather threat yesterday, a week before it happened, or close to a week before it happened. So we try to give leeway to these storms. They don't necessarily sneak up on us. The, the aspect and why we were live for so long yesterday is that with each tag of a severe thunderstorm warning that came out from the weather service, they were saying that a tornado could be possible. The thing is, with these storms, they can quickly spin up a tornado and there's not much lead weight to warn for it. We know the wind was with this cell, and you can see that we had a widespread wind damage all across the area. Um, Mayor, I appreciate the credit that you're giving the weather team. I do believe in everything that we do, helping people keep uh, helping keep people safe. Will, I want you to turn around to these heroes, though. Uh, our linemen, power crews, uh, emergency personnel, they, uh, tip of the hat to these guys. They've been out here all day. We've heard chainsaws, blowers going all day long. Um, the cleanup process for this likely will take uh, weeks, if not months, because the thing is, a lot of people, they can't go out and clean things up just yet. They have to wait for their insurance company to come out and assess the damage before they even touch a thing. So it's part of the process. And mentioning that, Mayor, they did mention this in the news conference earlier today that they do worry about looting. Uh, I was talking with an employee at this company that said um, they had a couple of guys that were in here kind of scoping out stuff earlier into the morning. So uh, law enforcement is going to be out tonight. They're going to be patrolling these streets. They're going to really try to crack down on looters. So let that be a message to everyone out there. Do not come out and try to take advantage of other people's suffering. Uh, it's incredible that these people uh, lived through this event, and the fact that people could come and try to steal from them is just uh, ungodly. Um, so just keep these people in your prayers. Luckily, everyone is okay, but it is going to be a big mess to clean up for a good while, Mayor. A big mess to clean up, but a, a community that is strong with neighbors helping neighbors. And thanks for keeping everyone safe, Riley. We're taking a live look back in Augusta now. I want to show you Walton Way if we can. Yeah, most of the flooding, thank goodness, in the city here has subsided in the medical district after the heavy rain yesterday. But, Mikkel, now we're watching and waiting for another round of severe weather that could come in on Friday. That's right, Meredith. And... Breaking news live at 5, less than an hour after we learned Thompson's new police chief is stepping out for personal reasons, we now know who will be taking over that role. The Thompson City Council just selected Daniel Carrier to be the next chief. He is currently a lieutenant working for the Richmond County Sheriff's Office. Carrier plans to start his new role at the end of the month. Take a good look at the man on your screen, 27-year-old Alexander Boone. He is accused of murdering a 78-year-old in Aiken. Authorities were called to a home on Brookhaven Drive yesterday. This was for a report of a burglary. Well, that's where they found the body of Swint Porky Bradbury Jr. Today, investigators say Boone hit Bradbury Jr. in the head several times with some sort of object, they don't know what yet, before stealing the man's shoes and jacket. Right now, authorities are still working out a motive. If they know anything about this case, if you do, if anyone watching right now has information, the Aiken Department of Public Safety hopes you'll give them a call.
We are less than two hours away from Augusta University's third annual Stuff the Stadium event. Our News 12 Sports Director Dan Booth joins us live from inside Christenberry Fieldhouse. And Dan, they're expecting a big turnout tonight. Meredith, they are, and when the Jaguars make their first bucket of the game against Clayton State, which tips off at around 7.30, then stuffed animals are going to be hurled from the stands onto the court for a good cause. As you can see, I'm joined now by head coach Dimitris. Coach, uh, obviously this is such a cool event every year that you guys have been doing. How many stuffed animals were actually donated last year, and what are you trying to hit this year? I want to say we had 1,256 or something like that last year. We're trying to get 2,000 this year. Uh, got a little earlier in the year in January. Our student groups are behind it. I see some people in the community bringing stuffed animals and like my shirt says for the game. What's one more stuffed animal? I'm going to wear this tonight and hopefully we get 2,000 and we give them out to charity the next day. You know, and the outfit you had last year was great too. So you listen, every year, new outfits. We love it. We just keep coming out here to see all the amazing things you guys are doing. And to that point, you know, you've been a part of this community for a really long time. How special is it and why is it important for you to give back to the community the way that you guys have with an event like this? Well, we impact you know, our, our area, our university, and our community by doing something something like this two years ago, everyone with the, you know, the Debbie, Debbie Doubters, oh, it'll never work, it'll never work, and it worked, and it worked last year, and it's worked, hopefully it'll work again this year, and just like the education games we did in Columbia and Richmond County, it's great to get people exposed to our basketball team and our university. You know, and, and one of my favorite things about this, too, is just the energy and the positivity that comes from this. Out of curiosity, knowing how much that goes into it, what is your favorite part about this event? The first year we did it was the cleanup because that was a mess. We didn't know how to do it. So last year, well, last year we got a technical board. So I got to talk to the referees ahead of time and brought a media time out. No, just to see how big some of the stuffed animals are. You know, I saw somebody one time bring them about five feet. So it's kind of neat what they bring. I start seeing them in their bags right now. And like I said, it's just a neat event. It really is. And coach, as always, once again, tip off at 730. I'm going to be here with live coverage continuing throughout the night and a full breakdown later on this evening at 11. You can see Dimitris wearing this shirt and later on this evening as well. And before I send it back quickly, I just want to say you guys broke in a little while ago. Nick Saban, Alabama head coach, has retired after six national championships with Alabama, and of course, all the impact that he had with Kirby Smart and all that success at that level. And I have a lot more on that tonight at 11 as well. Well, thank you, Dan, for that. Definitely some uh, electric vibes out there tonight, but we're looking at rainfall pushing in for Friday, so we're definitely going to be tracking that first alert weather day. Uh, stick around to hear more about it. Time and Temp, brought to you by Jamie Cassini. You can see a lot of lights in here. Cars are out there actually hibernating. Mama? She's on her way, bud. Metro Chamber and SRP Federal Credit Union on January 16th for Beyond the Classroom, the first women in business luncheon of 2024. A panel of experts will discuss the crucial role of business in student success. Register now at AugustaMetroChamber.com. People filing in to CES in Las Vegas. I'm Jamie Tucker. Coming up, what's the big idea? Well, imagine going to work and not worrying about traffic. Yeah, finally, a flying car. You've got to see that you don't have to be a pilot to fly. First alert radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, what are you waiting for? Call George Sink Injury Lawyers at all nines now. The sooner you call, the sooner they can help. George Sink Injury Lawyers has the experience to help you get your money faster. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, call all nines. The Wilson Family Tom. Save your roof, save your money. We can't handle a bumper car case, but if you've been hurt in a serious accident, George Sink Injury Lawyers is here for you. We're available to take your call nights, weekends, 24-7. Imagine never getting stuck in traffic again. Well, that's the lofty goal of a flying car on display at CES in Las Vegas. Our consumer tech reporter, Jamie Tucker, shows us more. 
What the Tech, sponsored by Augusta Preparatory Day School. For well over a decade, a lot of people promising flying cars at CES. Well, this isn't technically a flying car, but the Helix Pivotal is flying, and it's taking to the sky a lot sooner than you might think. Uh, the aircraft is a single-seat aircraft, all electric. The aircraft only weighs 348 pounds. With eight propellers, the Helix can fly for up to 20 minutes or 20 miles and up to 1,000 feet in the air. There's no landing gear, and it takes off like this vertically. So you can hover on a dime, you can spin 360, you can fly 60 miles an hour looking down at the birds that are taking off underneath you. That's Christina Mitten in the air. She and other Helix flyers do not need a pilot's license. The vehicle falls under the FAA's description of an ultralight vehicle. Therefore, it cannot be flown over congested areas. But Mitten believes that could change someday. You don't need to have a runway. You can take off from your backyard, from a soccer field, or from a uh, farmer's field. So it really opens up a lot of opportunities that weren't previously available. Uh, the, the inventor of the, uh, the aircraft invented memory foam. He retired and created this aircraft. Today is the first day that's available to the general public. And in case you're wondering, there is a parachute for the entire Helix Pivotal. It rests right here, so if something goes wrong, it's going to gently float to the ground and land safely. Now, there are a lot of other big ideas at CES this week. We're going to take a look at as many of them as we can the rest of the week. That's what the tech from CES in Las Vegas. I'm Jamie Tucker. Okay, I'm glad he mentioned the parachute. I was worried about safety. The Helix has been in development for 12 years, and in case you're interested, they'll be delivered beginning in June. The price? A whopping $190,000. We're back in a bit. You have wall cracks, sagging floors. Call my dad. Well, welcome back to Live at Five continues. We're looking at uh, just a beautiful sunset situation here. Uh, beautiful coloration of the horizon. So really just starting to see that horizon pop as the sun is now set. And we're looking at uh, beautiful sky conditions uh, on top of a beautiful lake picture right there. But 46 officially had the nighttime icon now. The south south winds, winds at about 5. Not overly breezy for us this evening like it was yesterday. As far as current temperatures right now, we are starting that decline though back towards the 40s. So seeing more of these mid and upper 40s popping up. And we are going to see temperatures pretty chilly for tonight. Getting down down towards those 30s area wide so waking up tomorrow we should see temperatures in the low 30s uh, and you can kind of see that here starting off on Thursday right around freezing for us here in Augusta and area wide and then we'll see temperatures kind of rising towards near 60 by about uh, Thursday afternoon before we see temperatures right back down towards those 30s for your day on Friday but Friday another big impact day in terms of weather we do have a first alert weather day in effect once again unfortunately for our day on Friday so stay weather aware and download our WRDW weather app if you haven't already it can save your life. It may have saved some lives in Bamberg, which we will go back to coming up on News 12 at 6 o'clock. Don't go anywhere. This is not you. It's not me. Real people.